وكذلك أوحينا إليك روحا من أمرنا ما كنت تدري ما الكتاب ولا الإيمان ولكن جعلناه نورا ولكن جعلناه نورا نهدي به من نشاء من عبادنا وإنك لتهدي إلى صراط مستقيم صراط الله الذي له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض ألا إلى الله تصير الأمور الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الكريم وعلى آله وصحابه ومن استنى بالسنة لوم الدين All praise is due to Allah and may Allah's peace and blessings be on the last Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and on all those who follow the path of righteousness until the last day. I'd like to welcome you dear viewers to another in our series In the Names of Allah. This series focuses on the names of Allah as mentioned in the Quran and in the Sunnah because these are the two authentic sources from which we can extract the names of Allah because as we said many episodes back the names of Allah cannot be determined by deduction human reasoning and logic we depend on what Allah has re- revealed to us as the basis for his names so that is the foundation that we've built this program on so every name that we look at we identify its source in the quran if it's there then that's sufficient that could also be in the sunnah but usually we just mention it's in the quran as its location if the name is not in the quran after we've finished looking at all of the names that, that have been extracted from the quran then we'll go and look at those from the sunnah from the authentic traditions of the Prophet ﷺ. The idea behind looking at these names is that we apply them in our lives because Allah did not reveal them just for vague knowledge, knowledge without any real benefit. In fact, the Prophet ﷺ told us to seek refuge in Allah from knowledge which is of no benefit. So we are studying these names in order to be able to extract from them benefit in our daily lives. The fact that there is benefit is also emphasized in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, in which he said, Allah has 99 names. Lillahi tis'atan wa tis'een asman. Whoever memorizes them or guards them will enter paradise. That is the promise of the Prophet ﷺ. So, we know this is a, a worthy enterprise for us to know these names of Allah. Also, we are trying to develop also ways and means of worshipping Allah through those names. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had told us in the Quran, وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ husna." فَدْعُوهُ بِهَا All the beautiful names belong to Allah. So call on Him with them. That's the basis or the, the working principle that we're using behind this program. How can we apply these names of Allah in our lives? On one hand, it involves knowing their meanings and in that way, we get to know Allah better. Because it is through His names that we know Him. Secondly, we try to find out what relevance the names have in our day-to-day lives. Whether we pray with them, or whether we uh, are conscious of Allah 
with regards to them and so it affects our day-to-day lives in a particular way. Or whether we reflect them, that there is some element of these names that we are also expected to live. Some names like Allah, the first of the names that we looked at, we can't live this name. This name is unique to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. Other names like Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim, the essence of the names, Rahma, mercy, is something we can live. As the Prophet ﷺ said, Man la yarham la yurham. Whoever does not show mercy to others will not receive mercy. So it means, obviously, we are expected on the basis of this name. Recognizing the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our lives, we are expected also to reflect that mercy to those around us. Whether it be human beings, whether it be children, whether it be animals, even animals who are expected to show mercy towards. In this segment, we're looking at the tenth name, Al Muhaymin, the guardian. And this name is mentioned only once in the Quran. There's only one place in the Quran where it can be found, and that is in Surah Al Hashr, the 23rd verse. Where a number of these names that are only mentioned once are found there. Allah mentions a, 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 about 15 of the names in that one spot. Well, it's 15 of his names. Al Malikul Quddus al Salam al Mu'minu al Muhaymin. The Sovereign, the Holy, the Bestower of Peace, the Grantor of Security, the Guardian. The meaning of this name from a grammatical point of view, was one where scholars had some difficulty establishing because the root of the name was in dispute. Where did this name come from? Some held that it came from Amana, which means to make someone feel safe. Thus, it meant the same as Amin, the trustworthy, Others held that it was from Mu'taman, trusted. Yet others suggested that it meant a watchman, a guardian, a witness, that is Shahid, or Shahid, or Hafiz, or Raqib, these other names. These were other meanings which were suggested. Relative to Allah, This divine name means the witness of everything which takes place in Allah's creation. According to the verse in Surah Yunus, verse 61, وَلَا تَعْمَلُونَ مِنْ عَمَلٍ إِلَّا كُنَّا عَلَيْكُمْ شُهُودًا إِذْ تُفِيضُونَ فِيهِ Whatever deed you may be doing, I am a witness of it while you are deeply engrossed in it. Allah is the witness of everything. It also means the watcher, the one who watches, as he's the witness, he's the watcher, and the guardian over the affairs of all his creatures. Actually, this name, Muhaymin, Allah refers to the Quran also as Muhaymin. Muhaymin over the other scriptures. In that, the scriptures which came before had become distorted. So how do we know what of those scriptures are correct and what are not? The Quran guards what is correct of the scriptures. So all of the other scriptures can be put in the scale of the Quran to determine what is authentic from them. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the title Muhaymin to the Quran itself. And 1,400 years ago, Allah said in the Quran that people had made changes in the scriptures and had written it with their own hands. This This reality was only discovered very recently. Only a couple of centuries ago, Christian and Jewish scholars 
studying the Bible, came to the conclusion that in fact, these texts were written by their own hands. There were duplications, they could see patterns in them, and they compared earlier manuscripts with later manuscripts, and they found all kinds of discrepancies, which led them to conclude that the whole of what was known as the Torah, amongst the Jews, accepted by Christians as part of the Old Testament, as well as the New Testament writings of the Gospels, that these were written by humans. This is not revealed scripture. Although it may compare, contain some elements of revealed scripture, it was not. The Quran pointed this out 1,400 years ago. So the Quran, it is the guardian of the truth. The truth which was revealed to the prophets of Allah. With regards to the effects of this name, what effect should it have? Knowing that Allah is the supreme witness who watches over all that takes place in His creation. This knowledge the knowledge of this name, Al-Muhaymin, should lead the believer to reflect on his or her thoughts, words, and deeds. Being aware that Allah is watching over everything that we think, we say, and we do, this should cause us to be cautious. Allah said in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 74, وَمَا اللَّهُ بِغَافِلٍ Allah is not inattentive of anything that you do. Allah is aware completely. So this name encourages the believer to take stock of themselves and to check their lifestyles. People easily get caught up into corruption when in a corrupt environment. And it happens without people even realizing it's happening. So, a person may come on a job, you're raised with good principles, you know, of being honest and everything else, but you go into a company, you join a company, where you find everybody in the company is involved in one or other kind of corruption acts. They're, they're, they're either taking things from the company, take paper, take pens, take whatever, take them home. Or, they're involved in other elements of corruption within the company. So you have come in, you're an honest person, and you're sitting amongst these people. In time, you will be affected. We're going to look at this point a little more deeply after the break. We'll take a brief break here, and inshallah, I will see you after the break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. When you are weak and the road seems long Remember, just remember, seek strength from the strong. Remember, Inside Huda is a program specially designed for you, the viewers. A program in which I'll be taking you behind the scenes to see the making of episodes, to meet the presenters, the preparers, and all those who are in charge of keeping Huda TV the best Islamic channel. Today's show is all about one special program from a very special presenter, Inspirations. When you are weak and the road seems long, remember, just remember, seek strength from the strong. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulillah. All praise due to Allah and may Allah's peace and blessings be on the last messenger of Allah. Welcome back, dear viewers, to our series, In the Names of Allah. Before the break, we are looking at the name Al-Muhaymin, the guardian, the watcher, the one who is watching over all of our deeds, external as well as internal, deeds that are said or deeds that are actually done with our hands. We said that Awareness of this particular name should 